Hey guys, welcome to week three of the Reset series. And um, this week we talked about resetting our mirrors. And if you recall, we talked about how important mirrors are and how many things mirrors are used for, from medical to um, law enforcement, to science, to technology, to grooming, that mirrors are critical in life. And um, we even gave a few embarrassing moments about mirrors and what happens when we don't use mirrors and how many of us may have shown up to work or to church with, you know, right color shoe, wrong match, and just because we didn't look in the mirror. And so we were, we were just, um, you know, we were just stating that, that mirror, mirrors are just a really important piece that saves us from mishaps and calamities and maybe even fatalities and um, how critical mirrors are in cars and they save us from, you know, fatal accidents. And so mirrors are just really important. And then um, we said that there's two different kinds of mirrors in life and uh, one kind of mirror sucks your life. You could even say maybe it's a sucky mirror because your life is a sucky life. And so there's one type of mirror that sucks your life away. And then there's another type of mirror that is life-giving and it makes life worth living. And um, we took a little bit of time to look at those two different kinds of mirrors. Um, in this whole scenario of our life, which I call an action movie, you know, there's just two different ways to live it. And um, one of the scripts that we go by actually hurts us. And the other one actually not only helps us, it changes us. And so we took time to look at the first mirror that we said sucks your life away. And um, we use a scripture in James, it's James 1, 23. And um, I'll just read that to you really quick. And this one, I actually start with James 1, 22 through 24. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but, letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are or what they look like. And um, in James, you know, he's saying that when you look in this mirror, um, the ones who live a life where their mirror sucks life out of them, they're the ones that just hear it and they walk away and they don't do it. There's no lasting anything and it's just left up to chance and, uh, and life ends up in shambles. And so the, this, this one mirror that, that um, we're saying sucks life, it's, we, it's, it's the kind that if you, if you think about in our worship set, Think about the song um, that, that God is never going to let you down. And think about that song and think, can I sing those words? Um, do, do I get a lump in my throat when those words come up? Why, why do I have such a struggle? Because if I had to be honest, God did let me down. Or think of the song, Good, Good Father. You can't sing those songs because good, good, and Father don't go together. This is a pretty good indication which mirror you are looking at for life. And, um, and we just said a few things about, you know, this particular mirror. It, it, shapes, it, it shapes your whole story. Um, you know, you base this mirror on your circumstances. And so, so this happened, and so therefore, and it's, it frames God. This mirror frames God. So, you know, um, my mom died, I got diagnosed with cancer, my son's in jail, whatever, whatever the story is. And, and, it, and your circumstances tell you who God is. And it shapes, it shapes your mirror, those things shape your mirror. Another thing is your assumptions, your expectations. You know, how many times have you heard, oh, this baby's gonna change my life. If I could only marry that guy, or if I could marry that girl, or the grass is greener, you know, there's a better job, there's, there's always something, there's some expectation. Those things frame your mirror and they shape your life. Um, another thing that really frames that mirror is lies. 
And this is something that maybe we're not as comfortable recognizing, but when we chase lies, it really frames our mirror. Like, um, for example, Sharon, nobody wants to hear what you have to say on Mother's Day. You don't, you don't know how to get up and talk in front of all these people. You're, you don't know the scriptures like Dale. You're not as smart as Dale. Those are all lies. And it's easy to chase those lies. And it's easy to base our life on those lies. And um, those are all things that, that shape our mirror. And you know, when you start to, to uh, let circumstances frame your God, when you let assumptions and expectations frame your God, when you let lies frame your God, uh, yeah, God will let you down. So one thing about this mirror, my mirror, my story that sucks my life, is, you know, has anybody ever titled their life, It's Not Fair? Well, that would totally describe this type of mirror. And um, I can't be certain, because I'm not a theologian, but I think It's Not Fair might have started in the garden with the serpent. I think that idea might have come from him. And so, um, all these things that shape our mirror, what happens is they crack our mirror. And um, cracked mirrors distort our view of God big time. Cracked mirrors suck the life out of us. They reduce us to dry bones. Um, cracked mirrors, they suck faith and promise and they suck a future. Cracked mirrors, they are guaranteed to put a chip on your shoulder. Cracked mirrors judge others, and cracked mirrors bite others. And um, if you find yourself in any of these places, you know that you are living out your life based on a mirror that you shaped, and your mirror is saying who God is. Um, then we said, you know, let's consider a few stories. And we went through a few stories of great Bible, you know, heroes. And, and we mentioned Lydia, who is a dear girl who goes to our church, who is young, battling stage four cancer. And honestly, she's the only person I've ever met who is grateful for chemo. And, um, and why is it that you know, there's people like Lydia and there's people like David in the Bible who they run to their giants and they don't run away from them. And uh, why is it that there's people like that? And I would say it's because they have a different mirror that they're looking out of. Um, this other kind of mirror is a life-giving mirror. And it's a supernatural mirror. Um, this mirror guarantees to change my life, guarantees to change my heart, my perspective, it changes everything about me. Now, it might not change my circumstances, but it might. And it may not change the outcome of my circumstances, but it might. But it still changes everything about my being and my existence, this other kind of mirror. And um, this mirror is in the shape of a cross. And uh, not only is this mirror an object, not only is this mirror the Bible, it's written words, but also this mirror is a person. And so it's words and it's whispers. And this mirror will change everything about your next breath. It might not, you know, undo your past, but I guarantee you it will change every day, starting now, of where you're going. Um, this mirror has the potential to wash dirty consciences and take shame off. There's a great verse, it's in Mark 140, and um, it says, a leper came to him begging on his knees. Have any of us felt like we need to beg? Jesus, I'm in such a mess. Can't you help me? I just hate my life. I hate what's happening. I hate all the sorrow and this anger or this addiction or whatever. Jesus, and have you ever found yourself just begging? And he says, um, he's, he's begging on his, his knees and he says, if you want Jesus, can you cleanse me? He didn't even want Jesus to heal him. He just wanted him to wash him. And deeply moved, Jesus put his hand out and he touched him and he says, I want to be cleansed. And you know, that's a desperate cry when somebody says, Jesus, do you want to? And Jesus says, I want to. 
I want to. He sees all of our plight wherever we're at right now. He sees all of the sorrows, all the mess ups, all the heartaches, every place we are right now where we've screwed up. And we say, Jesus, do you want to? And he says, yeah, I want to. I really want to. We have an assurance that Jesus will come running to our aid. We just need to say, you know, Jesus, here's not only my cracked mirror, but my mirror is actually broken and in pieces. And here's my broken mirror. Is there anything you can do with this, Jesus? And he says, yeah, I want to. This mirror, it's a redemptive mirror. Um, it isn't cracked. There's no lies in this mirror. It's true. What you read in this word, it's true. So when Jesus says, I will never leave you, it's true. Jesus isn't going to go postal on you. He's not moody. He's not in a bad mood. He's not going to throw over a table. What you read is really true. Now, it may not be what you feel, but it is true. And that's the mirror that you need to look at because that's the one that's going to give you the strength and the faith and the hope and the purpose for your next breath. Um, the mirror of the cross gives life and breath to my every dry bone. And... Um, this mirror makes my insides tender. One thing you can be sure of is that this mirror, it always has a promise for your problem. And his promise is true. It always has a road back. There's always a second chance. There's always new mercies. Every single day there's new mercies. There is a comforter. For your great sorrow, for your great grief, you can be sure that every tear has been bottled up in a bottle, and every tear is a prayer, and it has not gone unnoticed or unheard. You're never alone, it's true. You may be alone, but you're never alone, because you have a Jesus who is so big, and who is so present and all-encompassing. There is freedom from every chain, every addiction, every problem, there's freedom. Your saddest story is turned upside down and inside out. That's a redemptive story, and every prayer will be heard. In closing, in Hebrews 11, 1 through 2, you know, there's this great verse, and it says that faith and trust are what give you the handle on a life worth living. And to look into this mirror takes great faith and trust because, you know what, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to our education and our research. And, you know, we try to line up God with what makes sense. But then on the other hand, we see Jesus, he washes sins away. Tell me what makes sense. Right, it doesn't make sense. It's faith and trust. It gives us a handle on this kind of life, of looking in this mirror, of, of reading words, of listening for whispers. Um, and then at the end, I, if you all remember, I showed you this little tree. And I planted it last year from our Daring Faith seminar. And the Daring Faith, we all got these little trees. I don't know how many of you all planted these little trees. They were this big. They didn't have a, they didn't have a hope or a prayer. They were so little. And I planted it mine in a pot. And, um, and I closed it out with showing you my tree now. And my tree is about this big. I mean, it's probably five or six times in its size, still in a pot, not ready to put in the ground yet. But every time I see that tree, it sits by my front door. It just really reminds me that, you know, a life worth living, it doesn't just, it doesn't just happen like overnight. When you see somebody who has great faith or great love or great character, it happened doing one thing and doing one next thing. And so this little tree is my reminder to just do the next one thing. Like, come on, Sharon, the next one thing is don't chase that lie. Or the next one thing is forgive that person. Or the next one thing, do the next one thing. And before you know it, you're going to look back and you're going to have a tree that's going to be near ready to plant in the ground where it can sprout and be big and give shade for others. So um, I hope you have great groups and great discussion, and um, I love you.